talking a lot about the subconscious and fears and dealing with things by faith. And um, a lot of us have stepped up in our faith and, and uh, attacked the fear that has been like put on us by society or put on us just in the hour that we're in. You know, the unknown is a big deal because we like to know. We're those people who like to know the unknown. So fearing the unknown many times is, is a, a bigger deal than even facing something you actually know about because it's unpredictable and we like control, don't we? We like a little bit of control, a little bit of say-so, a little something, something there. And, um, I, and so I'm going to go through uh, talking this morning about, actually about verse 16, but I'm going to go down the chapter a little bit here. Um, verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 5 says, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Some translations say um, making the, the most or um, buying up the moment or buying up time because the days are wicked. Interesting thing about the word wicked is the word wicked comes from the root word uh, wicker. And so if you have like a wicker basket or something like that, if you dig into the, the deeper meaning of that, that means twisted. Right, something to be wicker means you're twisting it, and um, so when something's wicked, it can take the truth and twist it into a lie. When something's wicked, it can take a situation that you thought was going a certain way and just twist it. That's what's happening right now, and, and the Lord is asking us to come before Him, especially in the month of September, and uh, bring our nation before Him and forgive our wicked ways. Right. God, forgive our wicked ways. Forgive where we look like wicker, where we're twisted, where our heads are not on straight, right? We're walking with it going the other way. And so this was the scripture. He wanted me to talk about time, but I can't just pull this out of this chapter and just be like, yep, and that's the thing. We're supposed to buy up moments. Well, he told us this in a conversation, right? So you look at it, and even the beginning of Ephesians chapter 5 says, therefore. Well, whenever it says, therefore, you have to ask, what for? What's the therefore, right? So that'll help you when you're studying the Bible. Therefore, be imitators of God. Well, why do I need to do that? Well, it just laid out in the chapter before how wicked, how twisted things can get on you, right? So therefore, after all the twisted stuff is, has been related to you um, and to me, uh, verse 1 says, therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example as well-beloved children. Imitate their father and walk in love, as, uh, esteeming and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. Now he goes on and, and uses in the beginning of each sentence the word, like, for instance, but. But in morality, he's like, this is what we need to be doing. But check this out, right? When you use the word but, check this out. This is the wicked stuff that can take place. But immorality, sexual vice, all impurity of lustful, rich, wasteful living or greediness must not even be named among you as it is fitting and proper among saints, God's consecrated people. Let there be no filthiness. So now he started the sentence with let. That means we have to participate in this. It isn't a suggestion. He's going, you do it. Let. Well, we're the ones who let. We let there be no filthiness, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish and sinful, silly and corrupt talk, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting or becoming, but instead voice your thankfulness to God. For be sure of this, that no person's practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or life or one who is covetous, which has lustful desire for property of others and is greedy for gain, for in or for he, in effect, is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. This is intense. These are not the sermons like when you go, let's, let's pull this out. It'll be a positive morning. Right? And everyone goes, oh, praise God. I just want to talk about. No, that's usually not what happens. But he's warning us because he also talked about um, things being deceived in the chapter before people being deceived and all kinds of evil coming upon us. We're in that hour where this is like the fullness of this junk, right? It's not like it's something new, you know, way back in the day they had this little house on the prairie had this. It's just exaggerated far more now than it's ever been. 
And so it's talking about those different things. Then it says, once again, there's something that we got to let. We got to let no one delude and deceive you with empty excuses and groundless arguments for their sins. For through these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of rebellion and disobedience. That's an intense scripture. So do not associate or be sharers with them. For once you were in darkness, but now you are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light. For the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindness, goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. And try. See, every paragraph, every little paragraph is either saying, but check this out, or let this happen, or try this, or do this. These are instructions of how we're going to imitate God. First, you got to see the evil side so you know the, what you're avoiding. And, and this, then, you don't want to hear the scripture. On the other hand, a lot of people take the scripture and say, well, now we're going to talk about performance this morning and how we've got to earn our love from God. No, this is the warning of how sin works. This isn't about whether or not he loves us. This is the warning about how sin works. So this is how we got to operate because sin works this way, right? All right, and try to learn and experience, verse 10, what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be constant proofs of what is most acceptable to him. And here's another one. Take no part. That's another thing we got to do. That's a lot to do already just in this chapter. Take no part in and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness. But instead, let your lives be so in contrast as to expose, reprove, and convict them. Our life is supposed to be lived in such a way that there's, we expose, reprove, and convict those types of behavior. Usually when we read something like that, we see that, once again, as judgmental and judging people, and we take it out of context and do stupid stuff. I'm just being blunt about it. For it is shame, it is a shame even to speak and mention the thing that such people practice in secret. But with anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. I want to just stop on that scripture to... Um, I've had a lot of people saying, are you sure you should be dealing with this end time stuff or you should be confronting what's going on right now? Are you sure that shouldn't we just be talking about, you know, something more positive? And um, is that something really that people need to hear right now? But when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. That's our job. That's your job. And where everything is visible and clear, there is light. I would rather have a light on so I could see what I'm doing, right? And so we're the ones that are turned the light on, but we have to have the light in us to do that. And that's where we need to learn and understand his love. Therefore, he says, awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ shall shine, make day dawn upon you, and give you light. And it's, awake, get up. He's talking to us. Get up, O sleeper. Any area we're sleeping in right now, we got to get up. We don't got time. We don't have the time to just... Um, Ding around, if we'll say it that way. Look carefully then how you walk. Um, live purposely and worthily and, act and ac accurately, not as an unwise and witless, but as a wise, sensible, intelligent person. Now it first gets to the verse that I wanted to talk about. But in order to talk about that verse, we had to know this is what he laid out first. He's dealing with sin. He's dealing with how we can navigate around that and, and what we should watch for because the days are wicked. They're twisted they're wicker they're twisted um, making the very most of the time buying up each opportunity because the days are evil therefore do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the lord is the word will there is his precepts his commands his ways of doing things so we establish that through salvation we know when we gave our heart to christ um, part of why we did that is because we fell short of the glory of god we fell short of his will the way he does things right and so through his love, he goes, dies on the cross, buys us back from that, and then turns around and makes us rulers. And we're like, I don't even know what I'm doing. But we're rulers on top of it. It's like, ah, okay, I guess I'm going to rule and reign here on the earth with him. And it starts now. It starts as soon as you're born again, his kingdom gets in you, and he starts setting up rulership of who he is in you, and you just obey with that kingdom. You just go where that kingdom goes, right? And that kingdom has to what we're understanding that kingdom also imitates god and so 
many times we don't know what God looks like or we don't know how he operates. Well, a lot of these scriptures are, are letting you know this is what he's opposed to. This is what he's for. This is what he's opposed to. This is what he's for. So we're getting to know his character because we fell short of the glory of God. And so we've lost sight. It's like having amnesia. It's like, who, what? We're children of God, but we forgot who our dad was. Right? So getting to know him again is doing this, but making the very most of the time. So all these wicked things are going on just like now, except even more intense. We're making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Now, the word time literally has a meaning of opportunity. And it, it's wild to me, you know, what time is it? You're really saying, what opportunity is it? Is it time to eat? Is it the opportunity to eat right now? If you look it up in the Greek, that's what it means. It's an opportunity. Uh, and so we have a lot of sayings around time. We kill time, right? <laughs> I'm just killing time. Um, I'm killing opportunities is really what we're saying when we're, we're doing that. Um, even though time eventually is, is runs out and then we leave. We're the ones who die. We're, but we know how to kill time. We know how to save time. I'm going to save time on this. I'm going to save opportunities on this. I want to prevent some things from happening so it doesn't interrupt the opportunity of what I'm going after, right? Um, you can have time robbed from you or get robbed of time. I was just robbed of that time in my life. I was robbed of that opportunity in my life is what you're saying. Yeah? We lost time over that one. That's another thing someone will say. We lost opportunities over that one is what we're saying. We have all the time in the world. Well... No, but if you take it in the, in the view of time being opportunity, we do have all the opportunities in the world to change things. If we use that and steward that time, that opportunity, well, we can have all the time in the world, and that can sound really positive, but if we don't use the time for an opportunity, the time didn't do it for us. The opportunity never came to pass. Get the most out of your time, which would be get the most out of the opportunity. Um, I'm borrowing time, you know, or, or that person's living on borrowed time. Well, I don't know that that makes the same sense. They're living on borrowed opportunities. Um, but that's the saying that we have. Time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> well, sometimes when we're having fun and we're into inappropriate things, we lost a whole bunch of opportunities to do the right thing. And time flew. Time's flying. So we have sayings around the word time that when you look at uh, opportunities, it, it does take on a different light. Are you wasting time? Are you wasting opportunities? You got to make better use of your time. That's another saying. Make better use of the opportunities that are, are in front of you. We can't make up for lost time. You can only better your future. Because once the opportunity is passed, you can't go back to that opportunity, but you can go to the new one, the moment. It's an opportunity. Like right now, you're in the opportunity of learning. You have an opportunity to grow right now, right now. All depends on how you approach it. One person might be like, oh, I wish this was over. Another person might kind of, I got to write this down. It's your opportunity of how you spend your time. Interesting part is the Bible does indicate the promise of, of 70 years for sure. And then in other places, it refers to 120. So let's just say 120, let's go for the gold, is our years here on this earth. Um, that's a lot of opportunities, even though it goes by really quickly. I'm going to be 56 in October, and it's like, what? What? Uh, I, was saying, <laughs> I was saying to DVO last night, it's like, sometimes you, like, you get out of the shower, and you look in your mirror like, what? Who are you? Like, when did that happen? Like, what is going on with all of that? You know what I mean? And it's like, what can I, where's the putty knife? You know, I got to do something. <laughs> so, because time has passed. And there's just, it, it's to know what to do with your time, though. He's telling us to buy up each opportunity because, though, why we're buying it is because the days are wicked. Now, let's say you didn't know Christ. Time is still opportunity, right? It's a, it's a biblical principle. It's a spiritual law. It's opportunity. You have this moment. Use this moment. 
for an opportunity. And let's say that you're, you're not saved. You can build those opportunities around yourself and build your own kingdom. There is a difference between when we're building our own kingdom and when we give God our heart and the kingdom of God, which is at hand right here, right now, comes and dwells inside of you. And he sets up his kingdom in your heart. Now he is Lord. A lot of times that's not presented. And I'm an evangelist at heart, big time. And um, I've been where I've seen a lot of prayer lines where people have explained different things. It's almost like you're getting a ticket to heaven, but we're not realizing that, no, actually, we are, the kingdom of God is just, it was right here at hand. And you said, yes, forgive me. I want to make you my Lord. <sighs> the kingdom comes in and dwells in you. And all of a sudden, your thought patterns, he doesn't take over. It's not a hostile takeover where now you're going to think what I told you to think. No, but your opportunity is, I have the mind of Christ right now. I'm thinking different than I was thinking. I, I never knew of that idea. I didn't see that before. I, my, my time looks different. How I use my time is different. Like way back in Nam, I used to like watching certain movies. And I just say that as a time thing. I have sayings like that, so tolerate me, please. Back in Nam, um, way back in the day, I like to watch certain movies and different things like that. I really don't have time to do it now. It's a big to-do of like a production, like we are watching a movie. And then many times I fall asleep half the way through it anyway. Right? Well, I might as well use this time to, you know. <laughs> but part of that, part of that is, is my view of time is different. Is it that TV so bad and so wicked? I don't know. I think there's probably a lot of wicked stuff on it. But I'm not looking at it like I must stay away from TV. I'm just like, I don't actually, you're not an opportunity for me. I, I got, only got so many opportunities of time. Time is opportunities. I've owned so many, and then i got to line them up, and priority-wise, it's like way down here. So then after a while, you just don't even miss it. Because it's not something that's an opportunity that's actually going to move me forward. If you watch it, you're not going to die from it. I just don't have the time for it. Right? So there, there is something, there's something with that. There's things that we choose every day as a steward of time. We have to learn to steward that. That's part of what we teach our kids. That's why it's good for structure to happen in a home. Like it is time to give, get up. It's your opportunity to get up right now. Some good things going to happen today. First, we're going to deal with some chores, right? Or get in the shower or whatever. It's teaching structure of time because if we don't learn the basics of how to manage time, then time will get away on us. And suddenly you blew a day. You blew all the opportunity. And you look and you said, we did something today. How did it move the kingdom forward? Were you going with the kingdom? Was it moving forward? I don't know. Just doing life. See, there's some, it's just a view. It's a view of how to do that. Now, you can get way anal and just be like paranoid of every moment. We got to use this for every opportunity. No, you got to learn how to flow and steward time in a graceful way. So that even when you're working, you're having fun. See, the Bible says to do everything as unto the Lord. I have people, a lot of times, I was unloading some furniture, Vern wasn't there. And so I get invented, you know, I get donations, and I'm pulling a trailer now, and I think it's great. And we're putting furniture in homes or helping people set up in apartments or whatever. You get inventive because I could waste time, and I could say, well, there's nobody here to help me. I can't call anybody right now. They're at work or whatever. And now it's just blowing all this time. No, you say, God, show me how to move this by myself. It's crazy, the stuff you can do when you ask God for help. I might look a little funny coming across the yard with a king-size mattress, and I'm flipping it. I don't know I'm flipping it. But one way or another, I'm going to get it in there. Because I bought this moment. This moment's going to count because the days are wicked. I don't have time to make excuses to blowing opportunities. See, I... I'm not trying to make a law in your head. I'm trying to make you think. Holy Spirit wants you to think, yeah, what am I doing with my time? Who does the time belong to? It's my time. This is my time. What's kind of funny is, is sometimes we'll say, this is my day off. 
really do the days belong to you when he's Lord of your life? Now he gives us days off and we rejoice in that. Like, thank you, Lord of the harvest. He's a good, he's a good God. He's the Lord of the harvest. He gives you time to take breaks and do different things like that. Because he knows you got a physical body, your mind needs to recover, whatever. Let me bless you. Let me bless you. Um, but if we go, this is my day. You ever notice when it's my day off, how many of those days are ruined? Because he's like, sure, go ahead. You rule the day then. I'm not ruling it for you. You rule it. And, you, and you're just scattered all over. And you get to the end of the day and you're like, this is, was just unproductive. Unproductive day off. I think getting up in the morning right away and saying, okay, there is time today. What's the opportunity? What's the opportunity? It's a positive way of looking at your day. So we're going to buy up opportunities because the days are evil. Now, fear is being unleashed through stupidity, right? Through stupidity, through one world government, through everything from Marxism to whatever. And fear is being released, the spirit of fear. And we, we talked about this last night at TBO. Fear brings oppression, so it brings the spirit of heaviness. Suddenly you can't think straight. You're like walking in circles. You don't know what, what. Everything's so hard. And guess what the spirit of heaviness does? It causes you to waste time. Because everything's so hard. It's too much. It's just... <sighs> Right? And it gives you this heavy feeling where you don't take the opportunity and seize the moment. I'm seizing the moment. That, that moment belongs to God right there. Whoo, seizing the moment. We walk through a grocery store, and, you know, with, especially with the whole masks and all that kind of stuff. You know, it already sets the tone if there's a guard at the door or there's something like that. It already sets the tone where your subconscious thinks it needs to protect itself. So now we're not really paying attention to anybody else's needs because I got to get through this store. You know, I don't know if COVID's going to get me or somebody's going to get me when I'm in the store. You know, that's the feeling that's there. Or you don't want other people to be mad at you. That's the average person. If you get mad at me because I'm walking through the store, that's your issue. That's not mine. <laughs> right? But some people are afraid. It's like, well, that person gets disgruntled. I, I had a big old tall guy come stand for me because I had my mask down. And he was like, I was going to send a message. I was supposed to be like, oh. I'm afraid, <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm getting oxygen. I'm okay. You know, you keep moving on. That's, that's my view. That's what I do. And that's okay. That's my thing. I'm responsible for my thing and how I spend my time and how I'm uh, going to use that moment for being productive. But when someone's trying to dominate you, that's part of witchcraft. The word witchcraft Manipulation, domination, and control. The word domination means to tower over you like a big dog over top a little one, and the little one's on its back. Right? So what that does is it makes you look at the moment. I gotta just, I gotta spend this on this. I gotta spend this on this. I gotta spend on protecting myself, and I gotta spend it so nobody's getting mad. I gotta take so much mental time. And emotional strain, it takes up way too much time, space, and energy in your brain. And America is doing that right now. We're like stuck looking at this thing. Well, you know what happens? An enemy could just come right across the lines. Because we're all like, I don't know. <sighs> and it causes you not to buy up the moment. Because to buy up a moment, you have to be in faith. And faith is sure. What are you sure about? I'm sure this is what the Lord told me to do when I got up this morning. A lot of times I'll go into Walmart and I know I'm there for cucumbers. But the Lord told me, look for this person. I don't know who this person is. So I start looking. But if I'm paying attention to how I should be afraid and, oh, the crazy arrow thing. That makes no sense. I'm sorry. It makes no sense. Because if you come in that end and there's five people in the aisle. And I come in this end, I'm coming the wrong way. There's still six people in the aisle. But if you come in front of the arrow, you won't die. <laughs> it's like we are way too smart to be this dumb. Just saying. Saying. So, so what happens is all that concentration on that is on purpose. A lot of it's on purpose right now because there are agendas moving quickly to take over our United States. And fear will say, no, it's not. I, no, no, no. Research it. No, I don't like looking at that kind of stuff. 
and you'll stay in the dark. But me, I'm going to buy up opportunities. We only have so much time. We're in the last days. When you say the word last, okay, that could go on in God's timing 100 years, but it's still short. Because I can only, my body can only sustain here so long. I've been promised so many years. Well, I'm going to be 56. You can feel the change. So like never before, I got to use my moments. Like never before, I could live to be 100. But I got to use my moments because 50 more years ain't much. I blinked and I'm here. You're going to look at your, your little baby and you'll blink, groan. I'm telling you, that's how it works. You'll see that. We're supposed to make the very most of the time buying up each opportunity. So we look at the time and we say, where's the kingdom going? Why? Well, I got to work. I can't be doing stuff for God. I got to work. You're supposed to do all things as unto the Lord. What are you going to do at your work that's buying up time and opportunity for the kingdom? For the kingdom. I was at a place, um, you're not supposed to preach the gospel at the place unless someone asks you a question and, and someone asks a question. So I looked at the manager and she went, guess you got to go for it. So I was like, how long I got? <laughs> Shared the gospel. People are crying. Next thing you know, I'm pulled into the office. And the lady says, as she locks the door, I think I have demons. Do you know what to do with that? I'm like, because, but the whole time I'm teaching on the brain, the whole time I'm teaching, I'm looking for the opportunity. Where is it? Where, who, what, what, who, 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 who's that person? I'm looking for the one. Who? Because my mind thinks opportunity. The church has been distracted by fear. Fear doesn't teach you opportunities. Fear is shutdown mode. Fear is like hunker down, get down in the, dig a hole. We got to get in it, Right? How are we going to build a fortress around us right now? Do we need to do some things in these last days to prepare you? You should have extra water. You should always have a thing. I don't even have one. I got to go get it. Lord dealt with me again on this. You should always have like a duffel bag that has basic essentials or things in it like a screwdriver. You know, extra batteries. If you ever had to leave a situation, you're going to do what? You should at least have something you can grab that gives you something. That's just wisdom across the board without shutdown. So, but we're in this hour and fear is telling us, do this, do that, do the other thing. And we're distracted right now. We got to wake up. We got to wake up. Wake up, O Israel. <laughs> wake up, America. That we come into a spot that we're going to buy up each opportunity, every moment, because the days are evil. And when we submit ourselves, we're under God's mission. That's what the word submit means. We're under his mission. We're on a mission every day. Like you posse up, full battle rattle, get out of bed in the morning. Here we go. I'm on a mission. It isn't my day or my day off. In, in God's kingdom, I don't have a day off. In time sequence, he gives me time off, right? But I'm always looking for opportunity because he's always moving. How do we know that? The Bible says he does not sleep nor slumber. He's not like us. We're like, well, oh, I would have prayed, but I think this is when God takes his nap. <laughs> he's a roll like that. That's how my grandpa rolled. You know, where you're like, oh, we could have. Got lunch, but he fell asleep. You know, if he was taking care of us or whatever, it's like they're done, right? He doesn't work like that. And so he's always moving. The kingdom of God is moving forward um, forcefully and forceful when men, women and men lay hold of it. To lay hold of something that's moving, you got to be ready to move. Or that's going to jerk your arm out of socket. Grab a horse by the tail when somebody slaps its butt. Poof. Right? You better be ready to move with it <laughs> because it's moving forcefully. There's opportunity. So part of what we're looking at is how do we deal with the negative? You know, like, should we have extra water? Should we have some of these things? Yes, we should. We should always have that. It's just that way. We live in a wicked, twisted, wicker world. So we take care of that. But the other part is we shouldn't do that to the point we miss the opportunities. Because if the biggest revival 
is supposed to happen now. We are in that opportunity. Our brains should think like that. How we build our house, where we live, should think like that. I'm in this neighborhood because. See, the word because is for the cause of. This be the cause. I'm here because. Right? We're stationed. The church is planted where it's supposed to be. Other churches planted where it's supposed to be. Why? Because. There's a cause. So we're looking for what's the cause, Lord? What's the cause? Why you have me at this job? What you got me doing? I'm looking for the opportunity. For the days are twisted. So it takes wisdom to deal with twisted things, doesn't it? If we're hunkering down, if we're hidden in a hole, if we got a guardrail around us, we're up in a castle, any of those kinds of emotional feelings, we're not practicing how we're going to steward the opportunity and how we're going to navigate wickedness. Our prayers are focused on, mainly can become selfish. God, keep me so I never get, I don't want COVID. Lord, please, Lord, please, right? And we're stuck here, here, some more of here, right? Next day, more of here. <laughs> hey, we are blessed, and God's going to take care of us. You put your life into his hands. Let his blood cover over any sin. Walk by faith. Get up and look for the opportunities. <sighs> That's when I've seen the most miracles. It's never when I hunker down. Never. It's always when there is an opportunity that's going that I know even to fulfill this opportunity, even to move in this opportunity, I can't move in this opportunity without him. And so then he shows himself strong in that moment. That moment got bought up and you're like, whoa, God, you just did this with this moment. You rock. You're awesome. Look, we just did in this moment. But it takes somebody by faith, somebody here in this earth suit that says, yep, I'll take that moment. What you're saying is I'm willing. The word willing means to be on standby. That means you're ready at all times. Standing ready. Fully, full battle rattle. I'm ready to go. Got my outfit on. I just got up this morning. What's going to happen today? I have no idea. But I'm on standby. I'm ready. I am ready. And so then ready people look for opportunities because you're not getting ready. You're already ready. Now, ready sometimes, if you use it in that light, people will say, well, there's a lot going on in my life. I'm trying to get this stuff. You got to wait until I see. Wait says no opportunities. Back off the time. Shut down the time. Wait, wait. Stop. Right? We don't go and solve world peace if we got all kinds of stuff happening in our household that we need to get under order. It's hard to do both of those. But at the same time, we don't wait until we're so squeaky clean, which will never happen. <laughs> Before we get up and do something. We need to get up and do something. And so the opportunities that will come forward, you're going to be met with wicker. I like wicker furniture. I think it looks cool. You can paint it. There's all kinds of things. But in this light, if, you've, if you take it, it's taking time and twisting it. It's taking things and twisting it. It's taking people's hearts and twisting it like wicker. And, you know, you twist uh, that together. Like People like wicker, wicker furniture because it's pretty sturdy for something being just twisted together. Yeah, it's pretty sturdy. And when it's wicked and it's sturdy like that, it's hard to get in and break it. But God's going to give us and has given us the anointing to tread upon it. Tread upon wickedness. We're not treading upon people. We're treading upon wickedness that has people held captive. They're held captive. And we just really um, have to look back. See, when you look back at time, opportunities that were lost and opportunities that were used, you know, then we go, whoa, that's what's happened in our life. And we can have regrets about those things and we can feel good about those things. I don't want to have a regret. There will always be something I, I will feel like, oh, man, if I'd have had the opportunity, I'd have seized that. Right? I'd have done something in that area. But in the major part of my life, I want to leave this earth going, no regrets. 
I did what I was here for. I seized the moment. I seized the opportunity. So don't get offended by this. I'm going to say this up front because I can be really blunt. And so I warn you ahead of time so your brain gets all like shuffled and let me know when it's shuffled in. It's really cute and it's sweet to have all the hearts on the windows right, that they have when, when uh, COVID broke out. It's kind of like we're all together and we're sticking through this thing all together. That can be sweet, but it can be so out of faith it's not even funny because what it's saying is stay in your homes. We're all victims. Everything is a bully and we just got to stay together. All depends on how you put them up. You got stickers that are hearts. If that's how you put them up, that's what you you might be saying, yeah. I believe in it. I believe in my community. We are sticking together. I'm speaking the word of faith. I'm looking for opportunities to help people walk through this who are afraid. Let's go. Let's get this thing done, right? That's totally different than like, we're all sticking together. <gasps> yeah. Just huddle up. I'll call you. And are you afraid too? I'm afraid. We're so out of faith. It's not going to go anywhere. And nobody's going to buy up opportunities. We're just making more stickers. Then after a while, it can almost be like a fad. It's like, you got stickers, you're out. Yeah, I got stickers. <laughs> Don't be offended if you got them. All depends on how you put them up, though. Where are you at with those right now? Where are you at? So we, uh, we are buying up moments. That's what we're here for. Somebody asked me, well, if we're supposed to be doing something, what are we supposed to be doing? You know, I'm getting frustrated. Everyone's saying, stand up, do something. What are we supposed to be doing? Well, what's the opportunity that you're supposed to buy up? Your opportunity that you're buying up is probably different than mine. It might be similar to me, but you got to know your assignment. You go to the Lord of the harvest, pray ye the Lord of the harvest for souls. That's what Christians are supposed to do. The word pray ye there that comes with a connotation of like almost beg, like I got to have souls. So you're knocking on the door to his office. He's the Lord of the harvest, just like a farm. He opens the door, come on in. You sit down at his desk. You say, please, Lord, please give me the back 40, please. I, I know, I don't know everything about, you know, everything here, but if you'd help me, if you just show me how to farm this, I mean, I will be your faithful servant. I will be full of faith is what faithful means. So when you're full of faith, you stick to your opportunities. You don't just buy up a moment and go, I'm going to be a missionary. And then three months later, you're like, no, I, 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 you know, it's just this and there was that and, and we back out of it. If I'm in his office and I have to pray for any amount of time and I have to approach him and I am on my knees and I am like, pray ye the Lord of the heart, will you give me the north, Lord? I have done this. Give me the, the north. Please, Lord of the harvest. I, I, this is all I got. I mean, this is what you're working with. I'm sorry there's not a whole lot more here. But I know you. You are the one who's going to show yourself strong. If I just show up, I pray you the Lord of the harvest for, for souls. Yeah. And then you wait for your boss, who is the Lord, the master, to give you instructions. When he gives you those instructions, do you leave there and just throw that on? You know, here's the paper. You're like, yeah, I got that today. You throw it somewhere. Where's that piece of paper? What was I supposed to do again? You're going to handle it a little bit differently if you have to go to him with that kind of honor and respect. Because there's an exchange that happens at that desk. I will give you the back 40. It's ripe. The harvest is white right now. I'll give that to you. But I need your life. Excuse me? My what? I need your life. I need your time. The time I gave to you, I allotted to you, I gave you that 120 years, I gave that to you, I promised that to you. If you believe, I'll carry you to that, right? Healing is yours. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I need you to tithe off of that. And the thing you're asking me to do is far more even into the offerings. It's beyond a tithe. In some areas, he says, I need it all. I 
it's not a game. Buying up time is not a game when we get to God. Buying up opportunities. Our world is messed up when it comes to time because, I mean, you think about it. I mean, how long does it take to have a baby, right? There's a process of time. You better have thought in your head when this is like, this is this, this opportunity. We're going down the line here. This is my child the rest of my life. But so much of that is handled just like time. It's like, oh, it's already been three months. Let's just, I don't want to give it to somebody else. We don't want to. I don't want to waste my time. See how that can go? Selfishness gets get it because it's wicked. It's it's wicker. Um, if you if you use that, even witchery or crafting, like witchcraft, it's a witchery that crafts our thinking. It's like wicker. It wraps around and twists things. It's like the spirit of Leviathan. It's like Jezebel. It's like, poof. and that's what's been released over our nation through sin. Now to sit back and go, yeah, poof, blew that time. Well, Jesus will come back. Jesus said, you're not going to know when he's coming back. You might know the hour because the signs are here. The signs have been here for quite some time. And a lot of people are saying, it's okay, it's okay. This is how we're dealing with our fear. Jesus is just going to come back. That's, he'll, he'll come back. Somebody said in, in, in 2021, he'll, he'll come back. So we just got to hold on this a little bit longer. Really? You go to Acts chapter 1 when they began to share in Acts chapter 1 how um, these are the things that Jesus did, right? And then the disciples moved into like, so tell us how all this is going to happen. Could you tell us, Lord? And he said, you don't have business asking these questions. Your assignment is, since he's Lord of the harvest, he gets to tell us this. Your assignment is to um, wait for the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, and he baptizes you and with dunamis power, you will have the ability, because right now you ain't got it. You will have the ability to go right up close here, out farther, and then even to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses, which is the word martyr, which means to be seen and heard at all costs, buying up every moment. That's what it means. That's our power chapters where we're all like, Jesus, don't go. Right? This side was like, Jesus, don't go. And he's like, oh, hold on. I'm sending the spirit. The same spirit who raised me from the dead. I got you. You're well taken care of. But then the church across the board for many years has dishonored the Holy Spirit. We've made him small. He's there for mushy stuff. Oh, you need comfort? Oh, oh there you go, little spirit. <laughs> By the Spirit of God, by the finger of God, demons leave. This is the same Spirit that raised Jesus, Yeshua, salvation, deliverance power from the dead. And he now dwells in you to quicken your mortal body and give you life. Life, life, so you can say, here's life, I choose life, what's the opportunity? I choose life, what's the opportunity? What you got me doing today, Lord? I'm a steward of time. And you know what well, stewards invest? They invest. Just like wasting money, you can waste time. You invest money, you're going to get a payback. You invest time, there's a payback. It opens up more opportunities. So I've run many businesses over the years, you know, uh, working both preaching the gospel and working at the post office, doing all kinds of things. But many, you know, small businesses, small little things, you know, some, some of them are you're like under the pyramid thing and you got to, you know, work the business or whatever. And, and people will tell me, they'll be like, oh, I tried that and it doesn't work. If you sign up for one of those, I don't care what it is, and it's working for other people, the reason it's not working for you is because you're not working the business. Well, I tried to lead people to Christ, and I know that once, right? I made like three calls, and they said they didn't want to come to church. I don't think I'm an evangelist. 
If you want a business to work for you, you work the business. You get up when you're supposed to. You show up ahead of time. You are there. You are there. I'm buying up the moment. I'm buying up the moment. Right? Sometimes I got to ask the Lord for permission to sleep an hour longer. Because I get revved up. Instead of, many times, instead of it being like, oh, tomorrow I got to go to do this, and we got to get this person moved, and we got to over here, and I got to do a hospital visit or whatever. I get all revved up. What am I going to say to that person? And I can't sleep. Because I'm excited about the opportunity. Because he has showed himself strong, and it is fun to watch him move. If the gospel's not fun somewhere in there, you're not preaching the gospel. Then it's not built on you. It's built on you. And you're taking your time, and you're putting his stamp of he's Lord, but now I'm really Lord. Just watch what I can do, God. And we're making it hard. It's not hard. When he's doing it. I just got to show up. I'm on standby. I'm ready. Show up. Show up. I don't always look pretty when I show up. A couple days ago, it was like I apologized to the person I met with. Like, I'm sorry for all this. Because there were many calls before that or whatever. They laughed. We laughed together. You move on, and God shows up and delivers them. It's because it's really not about me. I ain't that amazing. Right? And so, so we're here to get the most out of time. You know, uh, what do they call them? Uh, penny pinchers? Or people are like, I can take this dollar and just squish it. We can make this thing go, you know, people, business people will talk like that or whatever. Well, we need to do that with time. And then some people will say, well, time is money. Well, to a certain degree, because time is opportunity. And if you're blowing your opportunities, chances are money will not come. Am I not right? Yeah. So he's telling us, stay away from sin. Let this happen. Don't let anybody deceive you. Let no filthiness come out of your mouth. Be sure that you stay away from sexual uh, immorality. Keep away from darkness. Get the light shine. I mean, he's just going boom, 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 boom. And then make sure you buy up the opportunity. Here's another reason why it's laid out that way. If we're participating with the two chapters before that he gives us all these warnings, we're poor when it comes to buying up time. Because we let those sinful things, which do cause you sin, according to Proverbs, causes you to come into a stupor, it says. Or one translation says you get stupid. Things make sense to you, but you're thinking stupid, but they make sense to you right? I've done it. I know. I was in a stupor. And so you, you get this stupor happening with fear base and with the fact that we participated in everything that he told us not to, right? We don't have to be perfect, but if our standard is like, I got a job, I don't have time to go get drunk. I got, the Lord of Harvest gave me this opportunity. Sorry, can't, right? It isn't, do I want to or not? Because I am spending my time. Well, I submitted to him, and so my heart is his. He's the Lord, so he's going to tell me what to do with my time. And if I check in with him at all and say, hey, what are you about? No, I need you to get to that back 40. You said you gave me your life. I'm like, yeah, that's right, I did. That's right, I did. We forget our salvation many times. Until we're in church, all of a sudden, oh, that's right, I better get it. Better get with it. I'm in church. And then we leave and we get amnesia and we're out there. Just we forgot we even met with the Lord of the harvest. And a lot of us haven't even taken that opportunity to meet with him. I'm not talking about give your heart to him. I'm talking about the meeting where you submit your life to him. Where we come in, what's your mission, God? Show me what your mission is. I'll do it. I'll do it. What you got? And you know, Rarely, because he's a wise, wise God, does he be like, you come in, and he's like, thank you for showing up, Dan. And then like, I'm going to give you, instead of 40 acres, I'm going to give you 120. And I'm going to bless you with all this money. And I want you in front of people and called and da -da -da, all this kind of stuff. And you're like, I'm so glad I showed up. No, he's like, um, can you uh, plow the field for me, my field? 
yeah, but I want my own field. I want, I like, I want to go out. God, I, you can trust me. I can, no, can you go do what you need to do? Did you fill the tractor up with gas when you brought it back? There's some things he's kind of watching to see how responsible are you? Because these are people we're talking about. It's not wheat. These are people. We have to be responsible in how we handle them. And so a lot of times we'll, we go all or nothing thinking, which is a result of wicker or wickedness. All or nothing thinking is in the heart of all forms of addiction or sin. And that is either I'm going to be an amazing minister of God or I'm, I'm not doing anything at all. Like, where is this whole middle field here? What are, what are we doing with the middle field? Well, I don't like that area because that's the grow area. I want to arrive or not to, okay? So it's up to you whether or not you want to give me a feel, but that's how it is. That's wicker. That's wicked. He is the Lord of the harvest, and his kingdom does not work that way. It is an honor-based system, and our society has forgot what honor is. There's dishonor going on all over the place right now. I have no tolerance for it. You do not dishonor the flag. You didn't die for what that represents. So it's easy to take it and be like, let's burn it. You didn't have family members lay down their life for that. Excusez-moi. I mean, this is, it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. And we need to be able to speak up on that because honor and justice and righteousness are some of God's favorite things. I know because I've been in his office talking to him about the harvest. The harvest doesn't have time for competition, jealousies, who's going to get the most attention, all of that. Who's going to be important in the end? Did anyone notice me? There is me, you know. I'm over here. God doesn't have time for that. When you interview somebody at your business, if they come in and it's like, yeah, I try to center a lot about me. You know, I will help people on occasion. You're going to hire them? No. And part of why he knows wickedness has touched our body. If the flesh is an enemy of the cross. So he already knows our changed spirit is sitting in front of him, but we're housed in an outside that's been touched by sin. So as we're sitting there, our flesh is like, mm, I'm in the office of the Lord of the harvest. Your flesh doesn't even want to be there. Stupid thoughts will start going through your head, and you're like, I'm going to see my boss. Hmm? He's in charge of the souls. Why is he in charge of the souls? Why did he get all the authority? I mean, there's people asking this question. I'm like, who is he anyway? Well, well, let me see you do what he did. Then you can have what he has, and then you can say what he says. He died for our sins. He laid his life down. He was unrecognizable as a human being when he was on the cross. They didn't know if it was a dog hanging there. Contrary to everyone freaking out about the Passion movie. Oh, he was nice. He was nice compared to what the Bible describes him looking like. He did that for us. He took on the sin of the world. The sin that was presently there and the sin that was to come. And when he died and he rose again from the dead, he had gone down to hell and got back the keys to the kingdom for you and I. It's hard to work for a boss when you can't get in the barn. You can't get in the where you keep the tools. You can't, you can't get anything because you don't have any keys. It's like, but I want you to show up. Well, the building's locked. Oh, no, that's okay. I got some keys for you. Just put your name on them. These are your keys. And they will open all the doors that you need open. What I need you to do is show up, be on standby, lay your life down, die to yourself, and I will show myself strong to you. That's our God. Mm, he's good. He is good. That's why there's a saying, yesterday's the past, tomorrow's the future, but today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. 
right? It's a gift. We have this opportunity. We have this opportunity. It, it's, you ever have somebody pass um, and you didn't get there in time? How many of you have had that? Like you wanted to see your grandma before she died or whatever, and then you get that call and it's like, oh. Anybody here have that? Yeah. It's just a empty feeling, isn't it? It's kind of a ugh, kind of feeling because you think, if I had the opportunity, I would say, just one more hug. I just wanted to let them know. Now, we can't live in fear and be like, well, you never know when anyone's going to go, so i got to love everybody. There. Okay, now you're way in the other ditch. But what I'm saying is be mindful of the opportunities. Be mindful of them. There, there is too much distraction, though, to be mindful. See, if you look at the brain, without showing a, a slide or anything, you have your emotional brain and your digital brain. But in the middle is your cingulate. It runs right down the middle. That's your thoughtful brain. And we've either been trained to live way over in the emotional or way in the digital, where we're digital and we don't feel anything. We're like robots, right? Or way emotional. Oh, my gosh, did you see how they looked at me? You know, like we're wigging. The thoughtful brain balances those two and has its own thought right down the middle. That's where your spirit, that's where the spirit of God prays through, is your thoughtful brain. They've shown it on, uh, I've seen it on Facebook and other uh, places where they have science showing what happens when you pray in tongues. It isn't lighting up your emotional brain. It's not lighting up your digital brain. It's lighting up your cingulate, which is the part of your brain that makes choices. It's your will. When your will lines up with his will, now we're like this with God. His precepts, his character, his ways of doing things is the word will. Now I'm going to take my precepts, my commands, and I'm just going to lay them right at his feet. We're going to become one. It's called covenant. Whew. The will part of your brain is your chooser. All crisis demands change. All change demands decision. All decisions have to have choices. Once you have the choices, you better shift and decide something. That's that part of the brain that says, taking all this, the emotional and the digital information, I've laid it all out or whatever, with me and God, this is what I've chosen. The crazy part is, when you get tight with God, a lot of times he chooses something that makes no sense with the other two. It isn't like, and this is how I'm going to meet the emotional. And yes, your reasoning is just right. It's like something totally, you're like, what? <laughs> Like, what are you saying? Especially after praying in the spirit, he, he, he causes revelation. Because this many times is soul-based. It's the, the base of this world. And so when we get where the Holy Spirit, who is dunamis power, is going to get right on that cingulate in the middle, suddenly we're going to make choices that make no sense to our emotional digital brain. We'll just, it'll just be like, that is not how my mama raised me. I don't know. Yeah? I was raised as a little kid that if somebody even looks at you cross out, you punch them right in the nose. <laughs> I have a broken nose. There's a story behind that. But, um, but you punch them in the nose, and you punch them in the nose as hard as you can so that when they drop, their eyes are watered, then you run or you finish the job, but it's your choice. <laughs> right? So I got sent home from school first day of kindergarten. Hmm. <laughs> Thought I was helping out. I, I got in my digital and my emotional lined up and said, this is a good thing to do. Now the Lord has got me, and not perfect, but he's like, keep in the middle. Keep in your thoughtful process where, I, where the Spirit of God is. Because I have every opportunity, every opportunity to go back to that. Um, it, it'll come up, and you're just like, did you just look at me like, I'm going to attach my emotional to my digital, bring up the old tree. Let's get it on. <laughs> you know? And at the same time, that was the training, but there's a whole different training that has now silenced, like, you know, quiet, silencia, shh. 
I'm hearing from God. That's what he wants. That's the area that's rich for buying up opportunities. Your emotional area ain't that rich. In fact, it talks a lot of smack. It'll, it, your emotional area is like, oh, yeah, we have plenty of money. Oh, my gosh, we can buy this right now. Hey, we don't have food. How did that happen? That's your emotional area. The digital area is like, this is the law. You shall not spend money. We're over the budget. We must. <laughs> right? You don't get to prosper in that either because there's no faith based in that. The hard part is to keep your will right in his. Whew. Suddenly, he'll give you revelation, and it blesses your emotions, and it speaks to your digital. And your digital will go, yeah, that's a good idea. I like it, right? So this is part of what's happening when we go to buy up moments. We go to buy them up. We're like, yeah, we're going to. We go digital or we go emotional, but most of the time we're not spirit. How do I know this? The body of Christ overall is way behind time of where we're supposed to be. Revival should have already kicked off here in America in a big way. It's, there's spurts of it, but it should have kicked off way bigger than this by now. The church should be operating where the spirit is operating because it takes spirit to lead someone to Christ. It doesn't take digital or emotional. I'm telling you when the spirit of God is moving, I've walked up to people. I just did this recently. I walked up to a person. I said, hey, what's your name? And she's like, blah, blah. And I said, how you doing? And I said, uh, what do you do for a living? She said, and I said, you know, I'm just out here, blah, blah, blah. And I shared the, just shared what I do. She goes, that's really cool. I said, hey, do you know Christ? Excuse me? You know, Jesus. Do you know him? I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about knowing him. She goes, well, I know religion, but I don't know God. Hello? But I was almost operating, like I was not emotional. I was not, I was just seizing the moment, right? This is the best thing to do in this moment. This is what the Spirit of God is saying in this moment. God is already moving on her in this moment. I'm not moving on her. So I didn't have a, a big emotional, like, you've got to come to church because God will totally change everything. You'll never have to suffer again. A lot of times people will do that. We get an emotional evangelist, and it's not accurate what we're telling the person. Or we'll be so digital and dry that they're just like, I don't want what you have. <laughs> but it's in the middle when the Spirit of God moves that it, he moves on them. And all you do is, I'm ready, so I'm just going to ask. I'm, I'm on standby. What do you want me to ask her? Oh, do you know Christ? No, I don't. Do you want to? Yes. Yes, I do. We make this stuff way too hard. Because we're in one side of the brain or the other, but we're not in the middle where God is. In the middle where God is, is so rich that you're like, I got so much time money. Oh my gosh. Because you see your moment differently. I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, anybody's got gray hair. I got gray hair underneath this color, so I, I can speak on my behalf, right? Um, there's something about a training like, well, we got to accept where we're going now. We're all getting old. Oh, my back. Oh, my. And we just talk the trash. We just get it going. And, we're, you know, it's coming to an end. It's coming. We only got this much more time left. And we, like, preach to ourselves and to others how broken we're, we, we are. Where's the preaching of, like, wow, I am in the hour. Like, I raised my kids. This is the hour now to hit this thing harder than ever. Because now I know to stay out of the emotional and the digital. And now I don't have to be all brawn or all amazing or whatever. I just show up. I've experienced him enough. I just show up and he does it. I'm just the one on standby. Once you find that out, because you got to go when you're younger, you got to hit your head against the wall and figure it all out, right? I've done that. I remember coming to church, big hair and just high heels and nails because somehow people are going to listen to me better. No, I found that the best services are when snot's dripping, mascara's running, right? And we're getting real. That's the best services. So, but we waste time doing that. And so then we'll think, I wasted the first 35 years of my life. You know, I could have been doing, I should have been doing, I would have been doing. Oh, shut it. It's past. It's time past. You can't go past. You can't go back to the past and be like, now I'm in the past, and so now I'm going to change it. You can't. You can only change your now. 
What's your opportunity right now? I have seen people, I've experienced myself, I blew 10 years of not just from lack of knowledge on something, and within a week, the production of it just went Phew. Within a week with God, I'm like, how did that, what? But if you're in your emotional side, you'll be like, oh, seven years have passed. I'm all emotional right now. If you're in your digital side, you're like, well, this makes no sense. There's no sense in doing this and because everything's got to make sense to the digital mind. And the math doesn't add up, so I guess I'll never be on the mission field. <laughs> what? What? Go to the Lord of the harvest. Let him light up your singulate, your will. Let him light up your will and get it lined up with him and watch him show himself strong. That's why we say phrases like, all glory be to God. Why? Because my emotional digital self did not produce any of this. It's the spirit. That makes sense? So what's your opportunity? Now, the brain will automatically go to all or nothing thinking. Well, if I got to name an opportunity, then I got to go to the biggest thing that's ever been shown to me. And some of that might even be your own idea. Yeah? Rain it back and go to the Lord of the harvest. What happened to waiting on him? What happened with time with him? What, well, I'm wasting time. Uh, no, because now what you're doing is you're going to get hasty. And you're going to jump out, and then you'll waste time doing something. I'd rather wait a week and hear something and go do it, and it be powerful, than I jump all over the place and make a mess of things. So what is he telling you? What do you got to get ready for? What are you practicing right now? What are you practicing? Remember I said you can go ask the Lord, Lord God, give me the north. That was years and years ago I asked him for the north. And he's like, sure, let's get you in some refiner's fire first because you got to be in the right uniform. Let me make sure you got the right keys. Let me make sure you show up on time. Let me make sure your yes is a yes and your no is a no. Let me make sure that you have eyes to see the people right in front of you, not waiting for the people to come. Because if you don't see the people who are in front of you, really he's going to give you the people to come? Right here. Right here is where we're looking. And you do the thing that you can do in that moment by the moment. By the moment. Sometimes it's just a handshake. Let me by the moment. And right away, the digital brain will go, that's why I wrote a book on, you know, handshakes and hugs and blah, blah, blah. The digital brain wants to have it in a format. No, not if you're following the spirit. And the emotional brain is like, I hugged Lane and she didn't hug me back. Oh. The God brain's looking for, who am I supposed to, oh, hey, right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me that. Person needs a hug. We're not in the habit of following the God brain. We're digital or we're emotional. Sanctify us, God. Sanctify us in this hour. Because now we're going like, you know, it looks like you pull out your wallet with money and you're like, what are we going to buy today? You know, the digital brain, oh, you ain't buying nothing. You need to save that. Just like saving time. You need to save time. Where's all the time you saved? I would like to see the money that I saved when it was 50% off. And they said, you saved this much money. And I'm like, and where is it located? <laughs> I don't, I... Could you give it to me? Because somehow I saved it, but no. You know what I mean? It's like saving time can be like that. There's, there's not a faith attached to it. We're going to attach faith to the moments. Now you're in an hour where wickedness, wicker is happening. Twistedness is happening. And what its job is to do is to distract you from your opportunity. This is the hour that things should flourish, just like Joseph's anointing, right? The grain bins were there in the Joseph's anointing in the worst time. There was famine through the whole land. He met the need of nations. But he bought up the opportunity when God told him far before that. 
He had to build the grain bins by faith. He had to get the people ready. He had to plant the fields by faith. He had because he knew it was coming. God showed me. God showed me. God showed me. Well, did your did your digital brain come up with that idea? Is that a digital idea? Did you go to school for that? Right? Are you afraid? Your emotional brain decided to make some grain bends. I'm sorry, you're just living in fear. Now, when God tells you to do something, you do it because he told you to do it. And it makes no sense to other people. And who cares? Who cares? By the moment. By the moment. So what I, I want to pray this morning is that we begin, there's so many avenues, we begin to steward our time differently just like if this was a class on money, you'd have to figure out, if you get all digital with money, there's not a lot of prosperity. You can say, well, I don't have bills. Well, good, but where are you prospering and where's your opportunities that you bought up? Well, I don't have any, but I, I got some here. I got money. And you can get all emotional with money, and it's always gone. But the God thing says tithe, offer, um, and I will show myself strong to you. Right? So time can be that same thing where you try to digital your time or you try to get emotional with your time. Just hearing one thing from him, you'll buy the moment differently. But you can't afford it unless he gives you the anointing for that moment. If you buy something emotionally, you spend yourself. If you buy it digitally, you spent yourself. If you buy it out of his kingdom, it was his bank account. My, I work for my boss. He just gives me this credit card and then lets me know when I'm supposed to use it. It's a different account. Buying up the moment. Hmm. So here we are today. What moments are you presently buying? What change do we have to do in our life where we're not so focused on all the baloney that's out there? Because if we'd all just buy the opportunity of God's kingdom, his kingdom would advance, and it would oppose the enemy, and it comes right into the face of wicker. Wicked. That's the plan. Right? We're like, no, we have to stop our opportunities because we got to come again. Let's all get, we're going to come against this. Because we're going to fight this because I'm emotional about it. Well, I'm digital about it. I don't think there's much we can do. We just have to ask for his mercy. When you pray in the middle, the power of God moves. Woo, he moves and stuff happens because it's him moving. God, help us to pull out of our emotional brain. I hear you, emotions. We recognize you. I'm not denying you. And pull out of our digital brain where those two parts become Lord over the king of glory. You don't get to be Lord over my thoughts or their thoughts. You don't get that right. The digital brain, I just want you to know, thank you for the information you store. We're thankful that you store information, you got facts, you got some wisdom going. That's good. That's really good. But you have to submit to the singulate that runs right down the middle of the brain that we have now given to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's Lord of the harvest. He's Lord of the kingdom. And we submit in Jesus' name.